It is another one of the newer racetracks added to the Gatorade Cup Series schedule. We're here at the Hattiesburg Speedway for race number seven. It is the Verizon 400 here in Mississippi. One of these classic shorter racetracks and we'll see which of these 42 drivers can be the final winner in the Gatorade Cup Series here at Hattiesburg. The number 10 of Ross McMarola on pull for today's race. Beside him in second, the number six is Samet Oskin. Then in third place, it's Laura Chung. In fourth, we have TJ Hanley. And rounding out the top five, Levi Schultz in the number four. Starting in sixth place, we have Farrah Longwell. In seventh, it's Andrew Miller. Then we have in eighth place, the double zero of Noah Clifton. In ninth, Zachary Fitzwater Sr. And rounding out the top 10, Keegan Thompson in the 41. Back by them, we have Riley Sanford, who is inside the 37. It's Bibby Ruiz. Then we have Riley Spurley, too, with the 47 of Jose Mills. Along with Anderson Reed and the number 12 of Max Anderson. Then there's Ryan Wilson and Marshall Burrell. With Griffin Lynn so close to victory so far this season. And Eli Bright, the 88, to his outside. Then we have the 13, Diego Yepes. And the 19, our points leader is Jake Galloway. Right behind him, two more Toyotas with Anson and Charlebois. And Galloway's teammate, Chris Jericho, on the 18. Then we have the one of Justin Zidell and the 34 of Bronson Minnick. Then there's Max Rossi and the 42 of Sebastian Kukulon. With John Beeford and second in points, Keyshawn Richardson. Then we have Comrade Evans and Jordan Stout. With Evan Hunter and Derek Hamill. Then there's Jay Reno, the 53, and the number three of Malachi Rodriguez. 14, Brandon Beal, 52, Zachary DeLello. Anthony Hernandez, the 48, the two is Luke Rainey. And the final row sees Cole, Luigi, and Jeff Wright, two Gatorade Cup Series champions on the back row to start out the Verizon 400 here at Hattiesburg. Let's go down and check to the fire the car is up for 51 laps around the Hattiesburg Speedway. Drivers, start your engines. Forty-two cars rolling off for 51 laps here at the Hattiesburg Speedway. Very unique racetrack in Mississippi. And we'll see which of the 42 drivers can claim victory and try and make it around in one piece. Ross McMarola and Smet Oskin are the front row for the Verizon 400 here at Hattiesburg as they come down the front stretch to see the green flag walls on either side. Could be like a canyon going through here. So we're green flag racing in Hattiesburg. Great start for the 10 and the 66. They get away first and second. Levi Shones and the four now going to the inside of the six. It's Matt Oscar who climbs the banking. Fitzwater and Miller trying to come from the bombs. They race all four for the first time today. The front two have gotten away. Shones gets the third. Miller gets the fourth. And lap one is led by Ross McMarola. But with a challenge from the 66 of Laura Chung coming in turns one and two. Chung getting through one and two really well down to the inside for the race lead. Behind their three wide for third, Fitzwater and Mill almost rub as they're trying to get by the fourth. Levi Shones, the 10 trying to keep that race lead for now and will. Now Miller slides up. Shones in the wall because of it. Fitzwater's through to third. Ruiz to fourth. And Miller and Shones are still falling back in the middle in the outside lanes. The 10 still leads. And they're still looking three wide. Shones able to clear in fourth. The battle's now for fifth. The 37 to the 38 go at it. The 10 wants to get up the racetrack. The 66 just a slight bit lower. Trying to get a better exit as they come off turn number two. The 66, Laura Chung, a nice run down the back straightaway. Chung right behind that number 10. They have gapped the field behind. They have to have at least a second, if not more, on the 51 and the four back behind. Still looking three wide behind them. The front, the front four have gotten away. Then it's three wide for fifth place. Noah Clifton, Simon Osgood, Andrew Miller, they're all going at it as the front four get away. It's two pairs of two leading the way here in the Verizon 400. And now a new leader, 66 Lord Chung, is by the 10 of Rossman Barola. And now Lord Chung will lead at Hattiesburg. Chung, though, climbs the banking through three and four. Watch out for the 10 getting back to the inside. It's once again side by side for the lead here at Hattiesburg. And the 10 not going to give in, and he's going to lead that lap. So, so far, the 10's led every lap for pole position, not letting Trunk lead that last one. And now the 66 really lost ground. The 10 gets away in a big way. The 10 opens up about 10 car lengths over the 66. Lord Chung not at all good through one and two. They're still packed tight together behind in the midfield. Three wide to the inside, Max Anderson, Anderson Reed, Keegan Thompson on the inside. The one of Zedell, the 13 of Pez, they're all trying to move forward. It's a mad, it, it's a mad dash back here outside the top 10. 
Then you have some drivers trying to work their way up inside the top 10 or just inside the top 10, like Andrew Miller trying to fend off that number eight of Riley's Bird to Anson and Trombot trying to move forward with Max Anderson. They're all trying to make it through cleanly. Griffin Lynn on the inside, trying to get by that 21 to Marshall Burrow, but Burrow does a great job on the outside, keeping that spot for now. The 10 gets away in a big way. Mick Marola has about a second, I would say, over that number 66, and it is. Eight tenths of a second, now up to 1.12, so gain three tenths in that one lap. The 10 is flying away right now, but Laura Chung has company for second place. Fitzwater and Jones are right there. Fitzwater now looking to the inside, almost some contact with Laura Chung as they'll drag race down the back straightaway for P2. Fitzwater, the only Rick Ware car not to win so far this season. He's up to now P2 to try and break that trend. Levi Jones in number four going for third, and Laura Chung who's faded back. Grabbed the lead for about three quarters of a lap, but has lost two spots since then. Chung back to fourth, Jones to third, and now fifth and sixth are gaining. Noah Clifton to Marshall Burrow trying to get up here. You have Griffin Lynn trying to fend off to Matt Osgin. Osgin started outside the front row, so we know that six is pretty fast. Now he's moving up to seventh place by that number 36, bringing Ferret Longwell, Riley Spurgeon, and Max Anderson up with them. Marshall Burrow also low on the double zero into the wall for Griffin Lynn in a big way. He's going to scrape it, still scraping it through three and four. Finally gets off it, but lost three, four positions, and even more. Here comes Anson and Charles Bois and Bibi Ruiz with huge runs, and Griffin Lynn is going to go backwards in that 36. A tough, tough break for Lynn into the outside wall, and the six has an issue. Osgood is slow, and he sold Max Anderson with them. Cars are scattering all around, trying to find a way to go, and Luke Gray is going to get spun around mid-pack. And he collects, it looks like that's the 34 Minnick with them. 24 Jonathan Buford as well. There was a stack of Kansas Smith Osgin, and it has caused a crash, and the 10's lead is now erased on lap number 10. Mick Marola leads. Now it's gone. Caution is out for the first time in the Verizon 400 here at Hattiesburg, and it looks like the field is ready to come down the pit lane for service on these race cars. And we'll see how that impacts the running order. That, that was chaotic mid-pack once that six had that issue. There's Oskin just coasting into pit road. Brunson make the 34, a lot of damage. The two fluke running also damaged. Jonathan Beaver was in it. Jake Galway is running damage. That's our points leader entering the day. My goodness. But we'll see how the pickers do on these cars, and we'll see... Who can leave pit road first? Will it still be the 10 who's led every lap so far from pole position, or will someone else have a say at leaving pit road in front? So there's the 10 into his pit stall, the number one pit stall for this race. And we'll see which crew does their job to get their driver off pit road in front. There you could see some quicker changes as some take two, some take four. Zach Fitzroy Sr. two tires and away. The 10 is taking four and he's gonna lose a spot to the 51, lose a spot to the 12 it looks like as well. So some mixed strategy on pit road will leave Zach Fitzroy Sr. out in front and the guys dominated from Paul Ross McMarola will now be inside the top five, but not in the lead. Fitzwater now leading. Let's go see what happened about the first yellow flag. Luke Rennie, last season's champion, spun around on the back straightaway. Here's the precursor to this crash. The number six, Sabet Oskin, racing off into turn number one on the inside lane. And that car up to speed, up to speed, breaking for the corner, but it breaks itself. So obviously something with the six wrong. He's trying to get low. Great try by Longwell, Spurrow, to Anderson not to run him over and cause a crash in front of the field. Unfortunately for Oskin, he doesn't, he doesn't get low in time. Anderson is slower. Here's some other drivers, like his teammate TJ Hanley and some of these others. They're on the apron. They're trying to find a way by. And poor old Luke Rainey. They see it looks like Kukulon trying to gain some spots on the outside. Just completely runs over the number two of Luke Rainey. Nothing Luke could do in that scenario. Collecting the 34 of Minnick, 24 Buford slams on the brakes. Galway got to the back of his teammate Evan Hunter to cause his damage, but really nothing anyone could do besides Sebastian Kukulon in that regard. Kukulon really the one to cause this accident. Sixty Oskin in real time. That's where the car's gonna break. He's trying to get low. Everyone slams on the brakes, but right here, everyone's kind of slower knowing what's happening. And Sebastian Kukulon around the outside and trying to get even more. I mean, that was, ah, yeah. I can understand, you know, driver seeing that gap wanting to go for it, but that was kind of reckless for Kukulon, in my opinion. And unfortunately, Luke Rainey and uh, Brunt's make it the worst of it. Jake Gower, points leader, also involved in this one as well. 
So Mick Morrow's lead is gone because coming off pit road in front, it's Zachary Fitzroy Sr. Two tires, Max Anderson, two tires. Mick Morola takes four tires. He'll line up third for the first restart of the day in the Verizon 400 here at the Hattiesburg Speedway. Coming back green after the first accident of the day here in Hattiesburg. It'll be on lap number 14. Zachary Fitzroy Sr. out in front with a two-tire call on pit road. All 42 cars still left running, including the damaged cars of the 2 and the 34. They'll be at the back of the field. We'll see how much slower they are compared to the rest of the pack. So it's Fitzwater leading over Max Anderson. Then Ross McMurla on four tires has led every green flag lap so far, but he has a challenge in third place. Laura Chung is now fourth, and Andrew Miller is now fifth. They have Levi Jones, Derek Campbell, Marshall Burrow, Noah Clifton, and Anson and Trapois. They are the front ten for the first restart of the day. Pace card to pit run. We'll see how a new face up front handles this restart. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. out in front of Max Anderson as they come down the front stretch to see the green flag to kick this race back off. And we're back going in Hattiesburg. Back there, a stack up around sixth place. Levi Jones went high down to the inside. Derek Campbell with a great run. McMurrow's already looking out as well. Burrow's looking out. Hamill's trying to get inside the top five. There goes the 10 with the four tires looking on Max Anderson. Gets a little loose off the corner. Oh, a lot of near contact in the back. We had, I think, yeah, Pez into the wall back there. The pack scatters behind the front 10 or 12. Now through three and four, Zach Fitzroy Sr. keeps the lead. Max Anderson in second trying to hold his spot over the 10 who's flying up here. Derek Himmel also flying in the 15, moving low for fourth on Laura Chung, but can't make the advancement there. Now we have a pass for third and maybe a pass for the lead. Anderson to the back of Fitzwater and Laura Chung to the inside of the 10 of Ross McMurrow of four third place. And Anderson all over the back of Fitzwater now looking low through three and four. The 12 gets up near the 51, almost contact for the lead, but they battle side by side. The 12 a little tight down lost the lift and the 51 keeps the lead for now, but Anderson right there in his tire tracks. Great stuff at the front currently. Anderson still trying to stay lower. Laura Chung goes low and Anderson for a second. And that might be Bell for the lead now with Laura Chung and Zachary Fitzwater Sr. Chung with great rotation through one and two. Miller and Ross almost rub back there. Able to keep their cars going straight keep it green. Now Chung climbs the bank because Hamill looks low. And Noah Clifton now looking low. Three wide for a second. And some contact made between the 66 and the 15. And they're all sideways behind those three wide. Three wide for second contact all around this racetrack. Great racing at the front. Clifton sends it deep to clear in second place. Fitzwater way up against the wall. And now Clifton goes to the lead in the double zero. The Aussies duking it out. Noah Clifton, Zach Fitzwater Sr. going at it. And it's Clifton coming out on top. Fitzwater again up the racetrack. Riley Spurgeon for second place. Three wide by Keegan Thompson forcing his way to the inside. And others coming up that we haven't talked about. Here comes the number 96, Anderson and Trapois, 95, Evans. Jeff Wright started last in this race. He's inside the top 15 now. Chris Jericho right behind him also did not start well, but now they're moving up. Fitzwater with the track and still losing spots in the 51. Now three wide up top and now it's at the top five. Riley Spurgeon for the lead on Noah Clifton in turns three and four, and Spurgeon will take it for the double zero. Chaos here at the front of the field. Spurgeon now leads this race. Keegan Thompson up to third. Hamill trying to keep fourth. Under attack from Ryan Wilson in the 32. And trying to come back to where he started this race. Ross McMarola, but still having a tough time getting through this pack. Hamill has to give on the outside. Laura Chung looking to go to the middle. Back at the front. Noel Clifton under attack from the 41 of Keegan Thompson for second place. Marshall Brown trying to get low. Max Anderson trying to get high. All these cars just kind of fight around. Chung up to the track again. Max Anderson looking to go to the middle of three wide off the corner, but thinks better of it for now. Anson and Trapois down to the inside of the 96. It's all kicking off here at Hattiesburg as the front few get single foul and get away. It's still chaos back around 10th place. It's Anson and Trapois getting moved aside by Conrad Evans. Almost contact for third place back there as it's the double zero to the inside Noah Clifton. Ryan Wilson trying to get to the outside, make that pass for third. And here comes that number 10, Ross McMurrola. Still not giving in quite yet. Keegan Thompson gaining on the number 8 of Riley Spurley too. And here's this bow. Conrad Evans and Anson and Trapois going at it. Brandon Beal moving forward in the 14. Chris Jericho right behind him. They're currently uh, just outside the top 10. Now Brandon Beal moving by to get his way inside the top 10 up to 10th place. Right by 9th place, Conrad Evans. And for the lead, Keegan Thompson, low on Riley Spurgeon, but it turns three and four. Spurgeon up the track, nearly into the wall, and Thompson clears and leads in the 41. 30 laps to go in the Verizon 400. Now Keegan Thompson leads the race. 
Riley Spurge with the battle for a second as Noah Clifton gets to his inside the double zero. Off to turns one and two. Clifton to P2. Mick Marola, who led the first 10 or so laps uncontested, now up to third place. Ferret Longwell to fourth, trying to get by Riley Spurge to Brandon Beal joining the front eight or so with Conrad Evans. Chris Jericho to 11th, also trying to get up there. Max Anderson, Levi Jones. Here comes Max Rossi, low and Anson and Charbois. Charbois under, under attack from Griffin Lynn, who got to the wall earlier. But now here he is, repaired the right side of that car and moving back forward in the 36. Jay Randall not that far behind the 53. Laura Chung has fallen back here, but now trying to get up there as back behind. Bill sent it on Fitzwater in the 51 to let up, and now he's lost some more spots. Around the outside, Jonathan Buford nearly involved in that first yellow. 24 making nice progress in the field. Now he's going to slice the one. Fitzwater, this is right around mid pack. This is good stuff back here. Look at Mills get sent wide by Jonathan Buford. As the Hendrick car started to come to the front, they had a dismal qualifying uh, session. But here they are making their way forward. At the front, mostly single file, led by Keegan Thompson. Noah Clifton right behind him trying to follow him through. Ross McMarola also there. Ferret Longwell, Ryan Wilson, Derek Hamill, Riley Spurrow to Marshall Burrow, Conrad Evans, and Brandon Beal. The front ten have gotten away. Chris Jericho is in 11th and in a world of his own right now with Max Harrison, Levi Jones, and Griffin Lynch trying to chase him down. Max Rossi is there with Laura Chung. John Tbiford is absolutely flying and slicing through the field. That 24, very, very good at this run. Has just moved up three spots in that one lap. And Jeff Wright, his teammate, trying to come forward with them. And so far, those 200 cars making nice progress. Buford looking low and Laura Chung for 16th now. Back up to the front. Noah Clifton has been passed for second and has lost even more ground. As now it's an SHR 1-2 with Ross McMarola. From pole, trying to run down his teammate Keegan Thompson, who currently leads the Verizon 400. Mick Marola trying to fend off Ferret Longwell, the 62, with some good pace at this stage in the race as we're into the second half of this race. That one yellow flag early on has been our only caution so far, but some chaotic racing throughout the mid-pack and up towards the front has led to a very entertaining race. It's starting to spread out towards the front of the field now, but it could come back together the later this run gets. The 41 leads the 10 and the 62 as they are closing in on Keegan Thompson who climbs the banking through one and two. The 10 and the 62 more committed to the white line on the bottom of the racetrack. A battle back by them for sixth place. Riley Spurgeon trying to move back towards the front. Derek Kimmel's next target with the 15 able to keep that spot for now. Marshall Burrow gets shuffled down the 21 and Spurgeon has another run at Derek Kimmel off turn number four. But can't get back into the gas like the 15. Hamill trying to pinch him off and will to keep that spot. Longwell has gone through to second by the number 10. And now Longwell's in sight set on Keegan Thompson to break up the SHR party at the front. Behind the Marshall Burrow. Really fade back there. Lost a few more spots and back down to 10th place for the 21. Chris Jerkin 11th will close in because of that battling. Levi Schultz in 12th kind of by his self with Griffin Lynn. How about John Thbeford still moving through the field up to 14th and showing no signs of slowing down anymore. Thbeford now has 13th and 12th right in front of him. Griffin Lynn and Levi Jones and is gaining onto their back bumpers and now looking inside of Griffin Lynn for that 13th spot. Oh, but Lynn shut the door. Two longtime veterans of the Gatorade Cup Series going at it. Ryan Wilson looking low, Noah Clifton. And Farron Longwell still trying to just get up to the 41 of Keegan Thompson. And Evans looking low on Riley Spurley Tube trying to get down there and Will. That's for sixth place. Wilson to third by the 10 of McMarola. Evans to sixth by Riley Spurley Tube. And McMarola back to fifth as Noah Clifton moves to fourth in the double zero. Maybe not quite yet. The 10, a nice run off the top of turn two. Pulls even with the double zero. Pulls slightly ahead. But the double zero through three and four on the inside prevails. And now Evans wants sixth from the 10. The 95 starting to come alive at this stage of the race as we're nearing the final 20 laps. Battle for sixth. Evans low on the 10. Chris Jericho has joined the fun at the front, making 11 cars. McMurrow loses another spot. Back down outside the top five. Back down now to, what is that, fifth, sixth, seventh place for the number 10. Jericho moving up inside the top 10, get by Brandon Beal in the 14. Beal the winner at Hills that last race. Still with a shot at this one, but losing some ground at this stage. Bro trying to get it back on Derek Campbell for eighth place. McMurrow back to seventh. What a disastrous few laps for that number 10. And up front, chipping into that lead for Farron Longwell. Keegan Thompson still has it.
Garrett Longwell all over Keegan Thompson through three and four. Looking low. Keegan's trying to give him some dirty air. And these two start bound and losing ground. Watch out for third place. Wilson, fourth place. Clifton, some of those others. They have some good runs back behind. Thompson, Longwell. The turns one and two. Longwell trying to use a better entrance. You know, backing up that entrance to get a better exit. Keegan Thompson not so good on exit, but they just come out pretty much equal off that regard. Battle back there, that's for fifth. Conrad Evans has it, Riley Spurgeon wants it. Spurgeon will get it from Conrad Evans. Fifth place for the number eight now. The 18 is still coming forward up to ninth place now for Chris Jericho. And on, his, on the back bumper of eighth place, Marshall Burrell. Speaking of moving forward, John the Beaufort still continues to do just that. Up to 12th place for the 24 driver. Got by both the four and the 36, bringing Jay Rando up into the top 15 as well in the 53. And Jeff Bright starting to lose the ground the nine. He hasn't made much progress forward. In fact, he's still losing. Luke ready to get involved in that yellow, doing a decent job at trying to reemerge. There's Jeff Bright. He's really falling right with his teammate Anthony Hernandez. So these others like Yepes has a bunch of left side damage. So obviously there's some more contact in this race. Andrew Miller has fallen back. There's Jake Gow at the back in the 19 and Bronson make the most off the pace in the 34 but still a pretty good ways ahead of these race leaders. About for eighth. Now three cars with Marshall Burrow, Chris Jericho and Brandon Beal now getting into it. Beal has gained because Jericho's kind of gotten halted by Burrow. Now Jericho wants to wait no longer. Harry goes to the end set for eighth place as we're nearing now the final 15 laps so it's time to get going if you want to make a move for the win. And Longwell starting to lose ground back to Keegan Thompson. Noah Cookson's gotten to third by Ryan Wilson. Jericho's to eighth. Brandon Beal now to ninth. Burrow down to tenth. Jericho has got Brandon Beal from that. Riley Spurgeon wants fourth from Ryan Wilson. Wants to get one spot closer to the front. Sends it in deep but can't get inside the third two. Might lose the spot now to the 95 of Conrad Evans. Evans trying to look but can't get there. Spurgeon keeps the top five for now and that number eight. Oskin on favorite Thompson, whatever the issue is on the six, it may have happened again, or it was just some separate issue, but the six back on pit road. Top break for Smith Oskin right there. Jericho in eighth, really wide through one and two. Brandon Beal hugging that white line, but couldn't get by the 18 of Jericho. Off into three and four. Keegan Thompson still leading this race in the 41, doing a really good job trying to get back-to-back -back wins for Stuart Haas Racing. They won and got a 1-2 last race at Hillside as Oskin is leaving pit road. Now Keegan Thompson in position to win this one. As here we go for fourth place, Riley Spurgeon, Ryan Wilson. Spurgeon is now inside of Wilson as they come off turn number two side by side. But Wilson gets a nice run, has a run now for third place on Noel Clifton as the cars are going to be pitting. Yeah, here we go. Pit stop start for our race leaders. So we'll see. Just coming in early, present the opportunities. Just coming in later as the front two pit. Noel Clifton stays out to lead this race. And that could be benefit if a yellow flag comes out, traps some of these guys a lap down, but coming in sooner, you get the tires and you kind of get out of everyone's way. You don't have to slow up for other people pitting. So Clifton leads. Now he goes wide. Riley Spurgeon looking low, but when do these drivers decide to pit? Might be now. Do they stay out even longer? So here we go. They're going to come in. It looks like right now, does anyone dare stay out any longer than this? So far, no. All of our leaders are coming in this lap. Yeah, I'm surprised no one's daring trying to stay out even longer to try and catch a yellow. So we'll see of these leaders who's the one to lead first. Like Keegan Thompson, remember, first went in. There's his two tires gone away a little bit slower. Ryan Wilson right behind him coming out. John the Beaver has, has leapt up ahead of Chris Jericho on Road. Longwell's right there. So they're kind of closer to Keegan Thompson than they were entering. We'll have to see if staying out any longer presents an opportunity for some of these drivers. These guys up to speed, trying to get around to the drivers that just came off pit road. So they're still leaving pit road. The leaders are long gone, though. These drivers are just trying to get back into their positions. There's Derek Hamill. So he's trying to gain some spots back. So there's Keegan Thompson. A little bit better outlap than the 32 and the 62. He's gotten away, so Thompson should cycle out to the lead unless some of these drivers had better pit stops and better pit entries, whatnot, better pit exits. We'll have to see here as they're leaving. Can Clifton and Evans get up to speed faster than the 41? Here's Keegan Thompson and Ryan Wilson and Ferret Longwell. Thompson clears them, and now it's going to be Mesh trying to get around them, and Longwell looks to go three wide around them. Wilson up the track and into the wall in the 32. Wilson gets the outside concrete, but still staying in it. These four under a blanket for second place. We're into the final 11 laps. Keegan Thompson leads this race in the 41. The battle's on for a second. Evans with a mighty pit stop gets up to P2. Longwell trying to get back to P2. Ryan Wilson's there in the top five. Noel Clifton now fifth. 
sixth place is now Brandon Beals. Burton is seventh. Buford all the way up to eighth. Jericho is now ninth in the battle for tenth. Ross Pignarola has it. Yepes is lapped down in the 13 car. So it is cycled out with Keegan Thompson leading, but don't give it to Keegan quite yet. He may have a nice gap with 10 to go, but on fresher tires, can these drivers try and gain and will mistake force them to gain? If Keegan ever messes up one and two or three and four, like he just did right there, Evans will gain. Look at that. Cut it in half for the race lead. Battle for fourth is on. Ryan Wilson messed up one and two. Noel Clifton looked low, but didn't get the exit he wanted. So Wilson keeps fourth, but it brings Brandon Beal and Riley Spurgeon closer. Now it's about for six. Spurgeon to the inside of Brandon Beal, who climbed the banking through three and four. Nine laps to go. Evans onto the back bumper. Now Keegan Thompson into turns one and two. Oh, Evans is looking lower. He's there to the inside. Evans now leads the Verizon 400. Maybe not quite yet. Keegan Thompson still fighting on the ins on the outside. Excuse me. Evans still on the inside. They're door to door, side by side to three and four. Evans on the inside prevails. Longwell almost gets up into Thompson for second place. Now Longwell is P2, but Thompson fights back. Eight laps to go. Now can they sort this bout for second out to catch Conrad Evans? Longwell will get to P2. Thompson by lose third even. Ryan Wilson down to his inside. Wilson is looking low. Ferret Longwell is low on Evans for the lead. Great one and two for the 62. Now he's by Evans, almost in the wall for the 95. The 62 now leads the Verizon 400 and a new third placement, Ryan Wilson to P3. Thompson fading after this pit stop. The 41 back to fourth. Maybe now fifth as Noah Clifton looks low. Thompson able to maintain in fourth now. Clifton in fifth. Spurgeon is sixth. Brandon Beal is seventh. Buford is flying before the pit stop, so it's probably going to be too little too late for him. He's in eighth place. Mick Marola, Dominic Carr of the day, currently in ninth in the battle for tenth is Chris Jericho and Derek Hamill. That's the front ten. Back to the front because Evans is not letting Longwell get away. Coming around to six to go. Longwell leads over Evans, but the 95 is close. And if those two start battling and start selling each other up, Ryan Wilson is third, Keegan Thompson is fourth, Noel Clifton is fifth, Spurgeon is sixth, Brandon Bill is seventh. They're all there. Bow for fourth. Thompson has it. Clifton sideways trying to get it. Evans gains on Longwell. It's even closer than it was last lap. He is there. Needs just one little mistake out of the 62. Even half a lane higher for the 62 and the 95 gains and maybe even passes. Five laps to go at Hattiesburg. Yellow flag went on the race short. Conrad Evans is right there on Ferret Longwell trying to get by him. The 95 a little bit lower through one and two. Back into the gas sooner and back to the back bumper of the 62 but can't get anywhere closer. That fourth place battle still going on and it's allowed third place Wilson to get away. Clifton is not content with fifth place and he's showing it as he gets by Keegan Thompson for fourth. Now the teammates battle for fifth. Brandon Beal low on Keegan Thompson. The battle for the lead still tightening up between Conrad Evans and Ferret Longwell. Back down to four to go. Four laps to go at Hattiesburg. Ferret Longwell through one and two with the lead. Evans can't get closer in second place right now. Wilson getting closer in third place. Now Brandon Bilp inside the top five and Riley Spurgeon to sixth as he's looking to get by Keegan Thompson in the 41. So Thompson struggling on this final run of the race was leading before pit stops and now looks like he's not even going to get a top five out of the days. Derek Campbell looks low on the 41 as well. Yeah, that fall for grace for the 41 for sure. Three laps to go. Evans is there on Longwell. Looking, pressuring the 6-2. Lot better through 1-2. and two. Yeah, just stayed right with them. Ryan Wilson actually messed up 1-2. and two, So now it might just be that those two cars to settle it. Back here, Thompson might lose even 8th place to Jonathan Buford. Buford's been flying, looking to get inside the top 8 now. As Thompson may even lose spot to his teammate who dominated the first half of this race. The 10 of Ross Marola. Two laps to go. Derek Kimmel trying to get by Riley Spurgeon for 6th place. But the battle for the win. Longwell versus Evans. Uh, very equal lines through one and two that time for both drivers. No one really with the advantage in terms of line right there as the race down the back straightaway coming to the white flag this time behind the Verizon 400. Longwell, better through three and four back into the gas before the 95. Here is the white flag. One more time around Hattiesburg for the 62 of Ferret Longwell. Evans there in case a mistake is made. The battle for fifth. Hamill low on Brandon Beal. Longwell through one and two cleanly. Evans can't close in. Down the back straightaway. Will mistake coming three and four for Conrad Evans. Evans there trying to pressure Longwell into that mistake through three and four. Longwell does climb the banking. Evans looking lower on him as they come off turn number four. 
long will able to maintain out in front for now. The 62 will win the Verizon Ford at Hattiesburg by a car length. That was close for Conrad Evans. Longwell did, did make that mistake, but it wasn't enough. Evans could not pounce. Ferret Longwell wins the final Gatorade Cup Series. Hattiesburg race, a rookie takes Hattiesburg. The Verizon Ford goes to the 62 team. Let's go see the finish results in the win standings after a crazy seventh race on the season. Here's how they finished the Verizon 400 at the Hattiesburg Speedway. One caution flag today for four laps and eight lead changes. Seven drivers led here today in Hattiesburg and the one out front at just the right time. Ferret Longwell leads eight laps right at the end to claim victory over Conrad Evans by just about nine one hundredths of a second. Evans right on his back. But if there was one more lap, it would have been even more chaotic. But Evans will have to sell for second place. Starting 31st, not too bad for the 95. Ryan Wilson in third place, very consistent here today. Noah Clifton, the new points there at the top five, fourth for him. And Derek Hamill breaks his way inside the top five in the last lap. Brandon Bill loses that top five in the last lap, but, but you know after his win at Hillside, sixth place for Brandon Bill, not too bad there. Riley's bird to a good day in seventh. John Thiefert from a port starting spot, eighth place for him. Ross, Ross McMarola led the first 10 laps from pole position, but ninth place for the number 10. And Keegan Thompson, the leader of the most laps today, fell to 10th in the last run. He led 20 of the 51 laps. Jay Reno, really good day from 36th up to 11th. Marshall Burrell, 12th place. Max Rossi, Chris Jericho, and Max Anderson complete the top 15. Also, TJ Hanley, Laura Chung, they started well, but didn't really run all that well. Anson the Trabois, Keyshawn Richardson, Griffin Lynn. That's the top 20 here in Hattiesburg. Good recovery for Luke Rennie. Spun around in the first yellow. Had all sorts of damage, but 23rd for him. Improved on a starting spot even from 39th. Improved 16 spots even after getting involved in that yellow. Fitzward and Oskin ran well early on. Fitzward led six laps, but 28th for the 51. Definitely not what he won. Andrew Miller also running well early on, but 30th. Levi Schoen's 33rd was running just outside the top 10 around the midpoint. Jake Gallagher Poitzer got damaged in that yellow. 35th for him. He loses the points lead. Code Luigi 36, two time winner this season. Jeff Bright was moving up through the field before pit stops with 39th for the number nine. Bronson got a lot of damage in 40th. And then Yepes and Zidel both fell a lap down on pit stops. 41st for Yepes, 42nd for Zidel. Let's now go see the point standings. Seven races into the season, here are the point standings. New man on top, Noel Clifton now leads points by 37 over Jay Rando, who moves his way up to second. Keyshawn Richardson now third, only one point behind his initial spot entering the race of second place. Jake Gow is down to fourth after his bad day. Luke Rennie now top five in the number two. Diego Yepes has fallen now to sixth. Griffin Lynn is currently in seventh. Hamill up to eighth. Beal up to ninth. And Fitzwater still maintaining inside the top ten in the 51. Baby Rose just outside along with Anderson Reed. There's Eckhart DeLello currently in 13th as teammate Cole Luigi. The other wild card spot in 15th. So right now the two wild cards, DeLello and Luigi, 13th and 15th in points. DeLello with his one victory, Cole Luigi with his two victories. They're currently holding down the wild card spots. But drivers like TJ Henley, Riley to Eli Bright just below the top 20. We know they can make some noise along with Max Rossi, Andrew Miller. Justin Zidell had a bad day, so he dropped in points. But watch for him because this mid-pack battle is still very close in points. And drivers like Ferret Longwell just got his first ever victory in the Gatorade Cup Series. He could move forward as he's now 33rd in points and could definitely still keep climbing. Keegan Thompson, really good day. 31st, he could even keep climbing. Conrad Evans, 29th now after his good day. You look at, you know, Sebastian Kukulon down 36. Can he try and recover after a dismal start to his season besides the win at Michigan? Can John Thibiford, is this maybe some momentum for the 24 driver with his first top 10 of the season? And what can drivers like established veterans Jeff Bright, Evan Hunter do as they fall into points to 39th and 40th? And so far, no signs of their seasons turning around. So it's been a crazy first seven races, and we're looking forward to race number eight. It's our second crown jewel race of the season we go racing at indianapolis for the brickyard 400 i'll see you guys then